welcome back to our channel today we are going to explain you about test design by seeing this video you will understand the design techniques used by testing professionals in leading organizations type of testing there are two types of testing one static testing the other one is dynamic testing static testing is testing the software by performing a manual inspection review or walk through inspection it is a technique in which the work product is examined for its compliance to specific standards and also checked against a history of common errors review it is a technique in which the work product is discussed upon by a group of two or more persons and re-examined or re-evaluated for possible corrections. Walkthrough It is a technique mostly done on the code developed by the developers where the code is traced manually to monitor the state of the program variables as a way of analyzing the logic. Dynamic Testing is testing the software by actually executing the software it is of two types one is white box testing the other one is block box testing as we discussed earlier dynamic testing is of two types one is white box testing the other one is block box testing white box testing means tests at the micro level of the programs that test each and every implemented functional task ensuring that all code options are exercised whereas block box testing comprises of two types block box functional testing and block box non-functional testing first block box functional testing it means testing that ignores the internal mechanism of a system or component and focuses solely on the outputs generated in response to the selected inputs and execution conditions whereas block box non-functional testing ignores the functional aspect of the system and concentrate on the performance of the system like the response time speed of execution usability availability etc next why test design is important in software testing the quality of testing is as good as its test design we will use the formal and customized testing techniques for deriving test cases from specifications input documents like test specification will help in achieving the proper coverage in testing each of the functions preparation of uniformed test specifications by testing team members and test cases will be more manageable next is what is the purpose of test design technique the purpose of the test design technique is to identify test conditions and test cases how will you choose the right test design technique choosing the technique depends on various factors like system type testing team members experience customer requirements regulatory requirements and complexity of functional requirements based on the above factors we can decide which technique will suit for the project next activities to do during test design phase first the test objectives established in the test plan should be decomposed into individual test cases then begin the process with high level test objectives finally the high level test objectives are decomposed into lower and lower objectives until functional and structural test objectives are defined individually 
Next, which activity in the fundamental test process includes evolution of the testability of the requirements and system? The answer is the test analysis and test design includes evolution of the testability of the requirements and system. Next, test design specification overview. It is in the second phase of the test development life cycle. Then specify the requirements of the test approach. Identify the features to be tested and its associated test cases. Then usually the test design specification should include the specifications for test design, test cases and test procedure. Next is overview of test design structure. Every test design specification should have a unique number. Then list out the features to be tested. List the set of test objectives covered by the test design specifications. The overall purpose of test design structure document is to group related test items like features, attributes and characteristics, groupings of features, levels of testing, reference document to the original documentation where the test feature is obtained. Next is process for identifying test conditions and designing test cases. We need to design tests by identifying test conditions. Then we need to specify the test cases. Then we need to specify the test procedures. Then we need to decide on the processes to be followed. It means that the process can be done in different ways from informal with little or no documentation to very formal with detailed documentation. The level of formality depends on the context of the testing including the organization, the maturity of testing and development processes, time constraints and the people involved. Next is we need to analyze the test documentation. During test design, the test documentation is analyzed in order to determine what to test that is to identify the test conditions. A test condition is defined as an item that could be verified by one or more test cases. Then we need to establish the traceability from test conditions back to the specification and requirements and enable the impact analysis. During test design, the test approach is implemented along with the risks identified. The test cases and test data are to be developed using test design techniques. During test case specification, the test cases and test data are developed and described in detail by using test design techniques. A test case consists of a set of input values, execution preconditions, expected results and execution post conditions. Next is expected result should be produced as part of the specification of a test case and include outputs, changes to data and any other consequences of the test. Expected results should ideally be defined prior to test execution. Next is test cases are put in an executable order. This is the test procedure specification. The test procedure specifies the sequences of action for the execution of a test. Then plan for test execution schedule. This is the last step in this process. It means that various test procedures are sequentially formed into a test execution schedule that defines the order in which the various test procedures are executed, when they are to be carried out and by whom. The test execution schedule will take into account 
such factors as regression test, prioritization, technical and logical dependencies. Next is test design techniques. The purpose of test design technique is to identify test conditions and test cases. Categories of test design techniques. Block box techniques and white box techniques. Block box techniques consist of three types. One is requirement or specification based technique. Second one is use case based technique. And the last third one is experienced based technique. And white box technique comprises with structure or statement based technique. Next is detailed explanation of block box test design technique. Block box technique are a way to derive and select test conditions or test cases based on an analysis of the test basis documentation whether functional or non-functional for a component or system without reference to its internal structure. Models either formal or informal are used for the specification of the problem to be solved, the software or its component. From these models, test cases can be derived systematically. Block box testing may be further classified into experience based technique apart from requirement based and use case based techniques. In experience based technique, the knowledge and experience of people are used to derive the test cases from their past experience in similar projects. Knowledge of testers, developers, users and other stakeholders about the software, its usage and its environment. And knowledge about likely defects and their distribution. Now we will discuss about requirement or specification based technique. It consists of three techniques. One is equivalence partitioning technique, the other one is boundary value analysis and third one is decision table technique. Equivalence partitioning technique. It helps to identify valid partitions and invalid partitions. Whereas boundary value analysis helps in checking the boundary values. Normally boundaries are typical places where errors occur. And the third one is decision table technique. It helps in condition where there are number of logical decisions to be made. What is equivalence partitioning? Inputs to the software are divided into groups that are expected to exhibit similar behavior so that they are likely to be processed in the same way. Equivalence partitioning can be found for both valid data and invalid data. Partitions can also be identified for outputs, internal values, time related values and for interface parameters. Test can be designed to cover partitions. Equivalence partitioning is applicable at all level of testing. Equivalence partitioning as a technique can be used to achieve input and output coverage. It can be applied to human input, input via interfaces to a system or interface parameters in integration testing. Next is guidelines for equivalence classes. If an input condition specifies range, one valid and two invalid equivalence classes are needed. If a condition requires a specific value, then one valid and two invalid equivalence classes are needed.
if an input condition specifies a member of a set one valid and one invalid equivalence classes are needed and the last if an input condition is boolean one valid and one invalid class are needed now we will see an illustration for equivalence partitioning equivalence partitioning may be best explained with an example of a function which has the pass parameter month of a date the valid range for the month is 1 to 12 starting from january to december this valid range is called a partition in this example there are two further partitions of invalid ranges the first invalid partition would be less than or equal to 0 and the second invalid partition would be greater than or equal to 13 equivalence partitioning is no standalone method to determine test cases it has to be supplemented by another method we will discuss about boundary value analysis technique behavior at the edge of each equivalence partition is more likely to be incorrect so boundaries are an area where testing is likely to yield defects the maximum and minimum values of a partition are its boundary values a boundary value for a valid partition is a valid boundary value the boundary value of an invalid partition is an invalid boundary value. Tests can be designed to cover both valid and invalid boundary values. When designing test cases, a value on each boundary is chosen. Boundary value analysis can be applied at all test levels. It is relatively easy to apply and its defect finding capability is very very high. This technique is often considered an extension of equivalence partitioning. Boundary values may also be used for test data selection. Now you will see the guidelines for boundary value analysis. Focus on the boundaries of the input. If input condition specifies a range bounded by certain values, say A and B, then the test cases should include the values for A and B and the values just above and just below A and B. And if an input condition specifies any number of values, then the test cases should be the minimum and maximum numbers and the values just above and just below the minimum and maximum values. Hope you understand how the boundary value analysis should be. Now let us see an example for boundary value analysis. If the same example of a function which has the pass parameter month of a date valid classes should not be less than 1 and greater than 12. Invalid class 1 is month less than 1 and invalid class 2 is month greater than 12. Hope you understand. When compared to equivalence partitioning which says select any test case within a range and on any on either side of it. Whereas in boundary value analysis, the emphasis is on the edges. Month 1 and 2 and 11 and 12 for the edges of the valid class. And also month 7, a middle value will also consider to be a valid class. Whereas month 0 and 13 for the invalid class. Experience has shown that when a test case 
or or just to one side of a boundary of an equivalence class is selected then the probability of detecting a fault increases the last one in the requirement based design technique is decision table technique decision tables are a good way to capture system requirements that contain logical conditions and to document internal system design they may be used to record complex business rules that a system is to implement the specification is analyzed and conditions and actions of the system are identified the input conditions and actions are most often stated in such a way that they can either be true or false the decision table contains the triggering conditions often combinations of true and false for all input conditions and the resulting actions for each combination of conditions each column of the table corresponds to a business rule that defines a unique combination of conditions that result in the execution of the actions associated with that rule the coverage standard commonly used with decision table testing is to have at least one test per one column which typically involves covering all combinations of triggering conditions the strength of decision table testing is that it creates combination of conditions that might not otherwise have been exercised during testing it may be applied to all situations when the action of the software depends on several logical decisions now you will see the guidelines for decision table technique the below rules can be followed for test case generation conditions is input actions is the output rules the test cases the above conditions have the following implications first one is rules are complete that is every combination of decision table values including default combinations are inherent in the decision table and the second one is rules are consistent that is there is no two actions for the same combinations of conditions the second type of block box testing is use case based technique it is developed based on use cases or business scenarios a use case describes interactions between actors including users and the system which produce a result of value to a system user each use case has preconditions which need to be met for a use case to work successfully each use case terminates with post conditions which are the observable results and final state of the system after the use case has been completed a use case usually has a mainstream scenario and sometimes alternative branches next it describes interactions between users systems etc that is use cases describes the process flow through a system based on its actual likely use so the test cases derived from the use cases are most useful in uncovering defects in the process flows during real world use of the system use cases often referred to as scenarios are very useful for designing acceptance test with user participation they also help uncover integration defects caused by the interaction and interference of different components which individual components testing would not see the third and last type of block box testing is experience based technique this technique supplement systematic techniques in this technique the commonly used technique is error guessing the structured approach to error guessing is called fault attack it is based on prior experience and technology next we will see the guidelines for experience based testing technique 
In this technique, test cases are prepared purely on user's past experience. Experience can include domain knowledge, knowledge of developers involved in the project, and knowledge of typical problems. That is, understanding the problems and identifying the solution by the team members. Experience-based testing technique consists of two types. One is order testing and the other one is exploratory testing. Order testing. They are informal testing. There is no preparation needed in this type of testing. They are not repeatable and they cannot be tracked. Whereas, exploratory testing are also informal testing. They actually involves in test design and control. They are useful when no specification is available for the team members and important notes are taken and the progress will be tracked on a regular basis. Next, white box testing techniques. White box testing techniques are also called as structural techniques or structure based techniques. They are based on an analysis of the internal structure of the component or system. It can be done in three different levels. One is component level, second one is integration level and the last one is system level. In the component level, the structure is that of the code itself that is statements, decisions or branches. Whereas in the integration level, the structure may be a call tree. That is a diagram in which modules call other modules. Whereas in the system level, the structure may be a menu structure, business process or web page structure. Next is kinds of white box testing technique. There are three kinds of testing techniques. One is statement testing. The second one is branch or decision testing. Third one is categorized as other techniques like branch condition testing and data flow testing. Next, statement testing. Statement testing exercises the statements based on the percentage of statements executed. In statement testing, statement coverage is the assessment of the percentage of executable statements that have been exercised by a test case suit. Statement testing derives test cases to execute specific statements, normally to increase statement coverage. Next, decision or branch testing. Decision testing exercises decision points based on percentage of decisions covered. Decision coverage related to branch testing is the assessment of the percentage of decision outcomes that have been exercised by a test case suit. Decision testing derives test cases to execute specific decision outcomes normally to increase decision coverage. Decision testing is a form of control flow testing as it generates a specific flow of control through the decision points. Decision coverage is stronger than statement coverage. 100% of decision coverage guarantees 100% of statement coverage but not vice versa. Next, other structure based testing technique under white box testing. There are three types. One is branch condition testing. The second one is linear code sequence testing. And the last one is data flow testing. There are stronger levels of structural coverage beyond decision coverage. For example, Condition coverage and multiple condition coverage. The concept of coverage can also be applied at other test levels like integration level, 
where the percentage of modules, components or classes that have been exercised by a test case suit could be expressed as module or component or class coverage. Testing tool like JUnit is useful for structural testing of code. We are almost to the end of this topic. Now you will see an example how to derive a test condition from a scenario. Here the scenario is employee ID access code. Test condition 1 is the positive scenario that is using valid employee ID code as a test condition. First step is the employee swipe the ID code, then verify that the door is unlocked, then enter the building, finally confirm that the door is locked again. A valid scenario. Now we will go for test condition 2. Access code cannot be read. The first step is first swipe the code, there is not a valid one. Then verify that the door is not opened and then the lock the D event in the system. Third condition is invalid employee ID code. First swipe a code that with an invalid employee ID. Then verify that the door is not opened. And then confirm and log the event in the system. The fourth condition is system unable to unlock door. Here swipe a code, then modify the software code with a known valid bug not to open the door. Confirm that the door is not open and lock the event in the system. Then test condition 5. Door is not opened. Here swipe a code. Verify that the door is not open. Don't open the door and wait until timeout is exited. And confirm that the door is not opened. Test condition 6. Door is not shut after entry. Here swipe the car, then enter the building. Hold the door for more than the prescribed timeout period. Then verify that the alarm is working as expected. Then log the event in the system. The last is test condition 7. Door fails to lock. Here swipe the call. Enter the building. Then modify the software code with a known valid bug for not to close after the prescribed time period. Then verify that the alarm is working as expected or not. Then lock the event in the system. With this we conclude our test design topic. With this, we conclude our today's session, Test Design. We will connect again with you in our next topic very soon. Thank you for watching our channel.